Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel Cloud Studies. So today we are going to discuss about how Azure makes sure that our data is highly available and ensures the durability of the data as well. So when we create any file or we store any data in our storage account, the data gets replicated across different data centers. It, uh, in primary region or in the secondary region, depending upon the option that you choose while creating the storage account. So as you can see on the screen, this is the place where you actually uh, define the redundancy of your data, where you actually define how you want your data to be replicated. So uh, by creating a storage account, you have this option named as redundancy. In this option, you have four sub options to choose from, which we will talk in detail about. Now, the main thing is why do we need to uh, enable this redundancy option itself, right? So this is basically, uh, let's say my data is stored in a data center. What if there is some issue with the data center? What if there is a, uh, a network outrage? in my data center, what if uh, there is a flooding in the area? What is what if there's a flooding in that region? I need to recover my data. So that is the scenario where this redundancy plays a high importance. So Azure actually stores multiple copies of your data so that it is protected from such unplanned events, which can be anything, maybe your hardware failure or network or power outrage, or you know, it can be a natural disaster like flooding. So this redundancy option ensures that your storage account meets its availability and durability target in event of any failure. Now, uh, you saw that there are four options, but they get broadly classified into two uh, major uh, categories. The first one is redundancy in the primary region. The second one is redundancy in the secondary region. When you talk about redundancy in the primary region, so let's say I am working in US and I have my Azure account, everything set up in US. So my primary region will become US. Now I want to replicate my data to UK, right? To ensure much higher availability. So in that case, UK will become my secondary region. Now it is subdivided into locally redundant storage, zone redundant storage, geo redundant storage, geo zone redundant storage, which we are definitely going to discuss about in more detail. Now, starting with the locally redundant storage, when you talk about this, you basically have a primary region where your data is stored. So for me, my primary region is US. So my data is stored in US in a single data center in three copies. So this is basically the architecture of how locally redundant storage works. So my data is there in a single data center in a primary region. So if there is any issue with the data center, then I probably won't be able to recover my data. And that is the reason zone redundant storage came into picture. Definitely it is on much higher side than the locally redundant storage because the data is stored in different data centers in the same primary region. So even if there is issue with a single data center, you have an option to recover your data from the other two data centers, right? Then what if the, there is a disaster in the region? What if there is a natural disaster in the region? There's a problem with the region itself. Then we have GRS or RA GRL, geo, geo redundant storage coming into picture. Now this geo redundant storage, RA basically signifies read access. So you basically have read access on the secondary region, which is created in GRS. Now here, this is replica of your local redundant storage in both primary region as well as in secondary region, because you have a single data center which has multiple copies of your data, three copies of your data, right? And similarly, in the secondary region, it also you have a single data center which has three copies of your data. But, you know, to even uh, better it more, in that case, we had geo zone redundant storage, which is, you know, on a quite higher end because in the previous, if you check, in the previous geo redundant storage, if you check the primary region has a single data center, right? So if there is a problem with the data center in the primary region, you have to go to the secondary region to fetch the data. 
but in case of geo zone redundant storage since the primary region itself is a zrs so the primary region has three different data centers where your data is stored in case of failure in one data center you can actually go on and fetch the data from other two data centers now even if the region fails you can again go ahead and grab your data read your data you have read access on the secondary region to fetch your data so this is how it actually works and coming on to the cost lrs is definitely least expensive of all in fact it is very less expensive and then comes your zrs and then grs and then gzrs so this is the version you know this is the way how your cost is measured and definitely uh, you know you have to choose one of these options based on your requirement if you if you have a data which you can replicate yourself easily in case of any failure then definitely you can go ahead with the locally redundant storage otherwise you know you can go ahead with zrs option as well also one thing to note here is in case of adls gen 2 you have this option for geo zone redundant storage you don't have geo uh, zone redundant storage option enabled for other blob and gen 1 options so we need to make sure that in case we are working with gen 2 then only we have an option to enable geo zone redundant storage so this was pretty much in detail in depth in case you want to understand more about this you can go ahead and read the microsoft documentation that is a single source of truth and it is very well documented thank you so much